Hey everybody, it's Jason Creel and you're watching The Lawn Care Life. Today's video is going to be a little different if you're used to seeing me outside in the yard. Today I'm actually sitting at a desk looking at my computer and we're going to talk about websites, in particular websites for your lawn care business. So what we're going to do is kind of give you some, some website tips, things that you should and shouldn't do on a website. And then we're going to look at some real life examples of websites out there and show you you know some of the things they're doing right and some of the suggested changes to make now let me start by saying this i'm no website expert i have uh, i can make a website but i'm not you know great at it i know some things about search engine optimization but i'm not an expert at that either i'm working with a company called Cavini. i'll put a link in the description below um, but that those are that's the company that built actually one of the websites we're going to show you. So some of the feedback you're going to hear, some of the tips and suggestions are, are uh, feedback that I've received from Covini on these websites. Uh, but then I might also give you my thoughts on it just from a layperson's point of view, somebody who's not a professional web designer, so that you can hear what I think about the website as well. But if you've been to my website, the LawnCareLife.com uh, website, that was built by Covini and I've uh, been great working with those guys. So what I tell people all the time is if you're gonna, you know, a website is, in my opinion, very important in the lawn business. Now, these are just my thoughts. Uh, I get a lot of customers from my website. Uh, it gives you professionalism, credibility, but it's also how people find businesses today. Now, is it, do you have to have a website? No, you don't have to have one. And a website that does not show up well in the search engines probably is not doing you that much good anyway. Uh, do you have to have a professional build your website? No, you can build one yourself, but like a lot of things, um, you know, if you're not as do it on an everyday basis, you're probably not going to be as good at it as somebody who does this for a living. You know, we would probably say that about all lawn care jobs. If you want to hire, uh, do your landscaping yourself, that's fine. But if you hire a professional landscaping company that does this on a regular basis, you know, in theory, they're probably going to do a better job. So that's kind of the way it is with web design. But there are, you know, things out there that tech savvy people can do on their own. Like I said, I've made websites before and then sometimes I have people come in and try to improve them, make them look better, more aesthetically pleasing and that sort of thing. If you have a website that nobody finds, it's really not doing you a lot of good. So that's where this whole idea of search engine optimization comes in or called SEO. And that's a, a huge ordeal that I understand some things about. We're going to talk about some of that in this video, but the SEO is very important because if you can get your business to rank well in the search engines and specifically Google being the most important, uh, by far the biggest search engine, then it generates leads for you. Now, on that being said, if you live in a very small town and you have a lawn care business in a small town, you know, there may not be a lot of people searching for lawn care in your town just because of the population not being that big. And so you might want to try to actually target multiple small towns to get enough people to build your business. On the opposite extreme of that, if you're in a very large city and you're trying to rank on the first page of Google, let's say for lawn care, Atlanta, Georgia, well, it's going to be a very, very competitive market and it's going to be difficult to rank on the first page. Um, without some professional help, most likely, and even with professional help, it still might be difficult um, because it's such a competitive market. So, you know, sometimes the small towns, uh, you know, it's not that much volume, but you can get ranked well. Uh, the big towns, there's tons of volumes, but you can't get ranked on Google. Maybe a medium sized town is better, you know, but uh, regardless, you want to try to get on that first page of Google. And of course, the higher up you are on Google, most likely the more clicks you're going to get on your website. But today uh, we're going to talk about some general website tips. Then we're going to look specifically at some of these websites and give you some feedback on these websites. Hopefully it'll be helpful for you, whether you have an existing website or looking to get one at some point in time. All right, let's get started. Again, these tips are from Covini and they've given me five website tips here in a document. So I'm going to cover some of these tips and we can discuss those. All right, so updating your site weekly. Now this may seem, you know, like a big task and who has time to do that? I'm out taking care of lawns and things like that. It's like uh, other, you know, your Facebook page and stuff. If you just don't ever put any new content on it, it begins to get stale. So Facebook and Google, other, you know, search engines, things like that. So both Facebook and Google, 
you know, and the search engines enjoy fresh, updated, new content. So to be able to update that, that's why a lot of websites will have a blog on there and they're putting new content on that blog to keep uh, the website more relevant. Also, what you can do is uh, like on your Facebook page, if you just post once a week, even if it's something nobody reads, at least it's keeping it uh, updated a little bit on Google. If you have a website, you can add some new photos to your, on your Google My Business listing or something like that. Just something to keep some new data coming in on that website. The second tip he provides is to invest in a good phone or camera. I mean, most of the nicer phones now have a pretty quality camera, but the point is that having nicer pictures on your website is gonna help. People want nice pictures. And just me personally, I like having authentic, real pictures of lawns that I've done versus a stock photo. I mean, most times a stock photo, you can pretty much tell it's a stock photo. Uh, so I like to try to get nice pictures of an actual lawn I've done. That being said, you might go with a stock photo until you get some nice photos. Don't put a, a you know a, a poor quality image on your website if it's authentic, uh, but really try to get some nice images and make a habit of doing that in your business. Maybe some before and after pictures, things like that. But try to make a habit of taking pictures of your work. The third tip is to make it as easy as possible for people to buy from you. So I think, you know, practically speaking, that means having your phone number uh, at the top of the page, what you would call above the fold, you know, the fold being what you would have to scroll down to see it would be below the fold. So anything that's visible without scrolling down on either your phone or your computer or tablet. So having your phone number in big, nice letters on your website, uh, and as well as having a contact us form. Now, a lot of people have a contact us page that might have a form where you can put your name, address, and things like that for a free quote. But it makes sense to also have that on that home page up there above the fold. Uh, of course, I prefer them to call, but a lot of people just prefer to use that form. So you might as well have that available on the home page as well. The fourth tip is to do some keyword research. There's some tools out there that are free, Google Keyword Planner, things like that. And you can actually see how many people are searching in your area for a specific term. Now, in my experience, it makes sense that, that a lot of times your, your primary keyword is going to be the words lawn care and then the city and state that you live in, for instance. Let's say we were trying to rank for Lawn Care Atlanta, Georgia, okay, or Lawn Care Atlanta, GA for uh, abbreviation for Georgia. That's probably going to be one of the primary keywords. And a lot of times, uh, if you can rank for that, again, it's going to be difficult in Atlanta, but in whatever your town is, then that's going to drive traffic to your website and hopefully lead to some phone calls. And for me, I don't know if, you know, uh, if this is recommended practice or not, but um, that when I went to put in the title description for my my homepage, that's what I did. I put lawn care in my city and state, and to me, and it helps Google uh, know that you want to rank for that particular area or that particular search term on Google. The fifth tip is to make sure that your website is mobile friendly. Now, a lot of times people are looking at websites and things on their phone, even more so than on the computer, I believe. So you wanna make sure that uh, that your website is mobile friendly. So you, you know, take a look at your own website on your own phone and see how it looks and make sure if you're using some kind of theme um, that it's a mobile friendly website because I believe now that Google will actually maybe penalize you from a search engine optimization standpoint if your website is not mobile friendly. But also just practically speaking, you want it to be mobile friendly because that's what people are looking at now when they see your website. All right, let me go over a few of these questions and go through these uh, quickly, then we'll take a look at some actual websites. So some common questions and tips. How often should you update your websites? Kavini recommends updating your website at least once a year to make sure everything's working properly. He says, you know, you can go two years if possible, but it's not something you want to just say, well, I did that 10 years ago and it's it's been fine ever since. You want to have some regular updates and make sure everything's functioning properly. Search engine optimization, we've talked about that. That's uh, how you rank well in the search engines. That's There's a whole 
strategy behind that is very complicated. A lot of times people pay a monthly fee to have that done. There is some things you can do on your own to that. One of the most important things to do is to have regular content updates. Like I said, having a blog or something where you're constantly keeping fresh content and relevant content uh, to what you're doing. So if you had some articles that dealt with lawn care, how to have a better lawn, how to, you know, whatever that's dealing with lawn care, um, then that can help Google know that, hey, that's what this website's about and give you a better opportunity to rank well in the search engine. The next question is, how can I find out how many of my customers actually came from my website? Well, one way, and it's not on here, but you can just ask them. When somebody calls you, you're like, how did you hear about our company? And they say, well, my neighbor referred me. Or, but they might say, well, I just Googled it and, and your website came out. And that's a really great feeling because that's one of the easiest leads you'll get when somebody finds you on the internet. Um, but you also use what's called Google Analytics, and it gives you all kind of data about um, how people came to your website and what they do once they get there. Did they stay on your website? Did they go, you know, did they drop off immediately when they got there? Or did they go to a, another page on the website? And it gives you a lot of information and can help you also understand what changes need to be made from your website. Next question is, can a website increase your revenue? And there's some data out there that shows that, yes, uh, there is a direct correlation to having a website and increasing your revenue. And more and more businesses are going online year after year. And I get, again, if you're just doing a small lawn business, then, you know, you may not worry about it to me. But if this is something, a lawn care business, something you're going to be in for the long haul, you might as well go on and get a website. There's a lot of benefits to having it. And it may take some time to get ranked on Google. But the quicker you start, the better chance you'll have of, of getting on that first page of Google sooner than later. Next question is, how, how do you know if you can afford a website? Listen, there's websites. You can find people to build websites for all different prices, okay? And like I said, you can build one yourself, um, and that may be the option if that's in your budget. But, um, you know, it is, I just tell people, if I was going to spend $2,000 this year, and I'm just throwing that number out there. I don't, I'm not quoting what somebody's going to charge you to build a website. But if I was going to do that, I would rather just put that toward a, a website than a, a direct mail campaign, which a direct mail campaign may, you know, bring you some customers right then. But once that direct mail campaign's over, it's done where that website can continue to bring you customers year after year. Last question before we get to looking at some actual websites is, how can you get traffic to your websites other than a search engine? And a lot of that has to do with social media. So if you, you know, build a, a Facebook presence or you can link back to your website on Facebook, Pinterest, Instagram, YouTube, whatever, and get people to your website uh, using those platforms. All right, let's take a look at some actual websites. We're going to give you some feedback. This is not meant to be overly critical. Just wanted to provide some helpful information on these websites from a professional and you can uh, take what we discuss on these websites and hopefully make some changes on your own website. So let's take a look. We're going off with NEPA Lawn Daddy. I, I think, I'm not 100% sure, but I think that's Northeast or Northeastern Pennsylvania Lawn Daddy. And we're sitting, or we're looking at a website here. So the, I don't know if we should say that's NEPA or just call it NEPA, but I, I think he's uh, in Northeastern Pennsylvania. So let me uh, give you just a little bit of thoughts. What I see, what I did like here, um, I do this on my website. There's a pay my bill link where customers can pay my bill. I like that. Um, I, he's got a social media link was good. You know, my gut feeling is when I look here, that phone number is, is pretty small. I want my phone number big, like as big as it is on right here where that says NEPA, NEPA Lawn Daddy. I like my phone number about that size or, you know, considerably bigger. That's just my thought. So let's see what uh, Kaveni had to say about this particular website. So let's start with the pros. Information is clearly displayed in multiple places. So let's scroll down the website so you can see it. You can see here, uh, got a picture of real life lawn there. That's not a stock image. I like that. It's a nice looking lawn. I, I appreciate these cool season grasses. We don't see those much down here in Alabama. And uh, phone number, email there if you want to contact them. There he is in Pennsylvania here. And uh, link again to the uh, email address. And then he's got some other here where you can get a quote. You can meet, uh, kind of a meet the person so it makes it more personal. Services, features, 
things like that. So, all right, pros, information's clearly displayed in multiple places. Uh, the also another pro is has calls to action on the header, which is, I guess, your, your Gmail, uh, your Gmail email account here, and the phone number would be probably the most important call to action because that's ultimately what you want them to do is call. And then uh, specifically mentions his service location. And so that's important. So if somebody looks on there, I think that's probably important for Google too. So they'll know where you're located, but also for your customers. They say, okay, yeah, he's in my area. That's great. And then uh, the other uh, benefit here that the other pro that Kaveni mentions has a good number of unique pages. You know, I guess what he's saying is you don't want just like have three pages, you know, a home, get a quote and about us or something. So he has multiple pages, which means more content on the website. More content typically is beneficial when it comes to search engine optimization. All right, here's the cons, the negatives about this website. He, uh, he mentions an inconsistent color scheme. So you can see there it's got some yellow and white and black and the colors don't and, and then you switch down here it's it's a sprinkler with a green background and then back to the yellow. So yeah inconsistency there. Aesthetically that just doesn't look quite as nice. So probably a more consistent color theme. I don't mind the yellow. It's something different. I mean green obviously is lawn care color but uh Seems seem to me just to pick uh, one color scheme and kind of stick with it. Not enough written content so let's see if we go to the about page here. Let's try that out. We got a nice picture, but you know, very little, just a little paragraph there. So in general, you want more text on your pages. And then uh, hard to navigate the design, not enough buttons or easy to use menus. So you do have this top menu, which doesn't look um, too bad to me, but I guess when, as you scroll down, there's no buttons here. Oh, here's a click to learn more button. Let's see where that takes you. Takes you to the services page. Okay. And that, to me, that looks pretty good. I like that background image there. That looks really good. Uh, these are some really nice images, even though they're stock images. Um, but it looks good. But yeah, the con so you contact the page where that takes you. So it takes you to contact us form. Again, I would say make that phone number very visible. I mean, I see it, but it, it's just not big enough in my opinion, but a nice uh, contact us form here. And hopefully that's linking directly to his email where he can be sure to give that person a call or get back with them as quick as possible. All right, let's move on to the next website. This one is Louisiana Lawn Pros. I like the logo uh, pretty well there and checking out this website more uh, southern turf that i'm familiar with so vini says the call to action is clearly displayed uh, and there's links for them to to choose what they want to do so there's a clear uh, contact us button here's a clear contact us button i will say just right off the bat i don't see a phone number at all above the fold so i would uh, want to add that I'm, i would hope it's on here somewhere uh, then the next pro that he mentions is a, a unified style of design and content placement. Everything looks like it belongs with his business. Okay, so it's kind of a unified look to the website. I think these boxes look pretty good. Um, so there's a lot of uh, nice features to this website. Here's some real life images that look good. He mentions next a good placement of previous work in the gallery section. So you scroll down here and uh, yeah, very realistic pictures, even a slight striping job here on this yard that you can see. So I think those are good having real life images, even having a, a more personal with the actual person on a commercial grade mower. And then he says that each page has a decent amount of content on it. So let's, let's see if we go to the about us page the about us page yeah so a little bit more content there there's the phone number easy to find that's good um, again I'd probably like to see it above the fold personally we got to get a free quote box go back to the home page so the cons of this one that Kavini mentions is the buttons are not mobile response and I'm not gonna pull this up on my phone uh, but he says when using a cell phone that the buttons actually disappear so that's not a good thing um, because again, most people are probably finding this on a cell phone. And he said it can penalize you by Google because of it not being mobile responsive. No appointment or scheduling 
uh, system. Now, I, I did, hold on, I saw that on the, was it the Contact Us page? I thought there was a, a well, you got this, a Contact Us form. I don't know if that's, um, maybe that would be beneficial to have that on the home page, uh, a Contact Us form there as well. I, I kind of like, again, having it up here, phone number and a Contact Us form up here, very visible, that's easy to find. Now the con hard to find their phone number. I agree. I had to had to look. It was clearly displayed on on one page, but on the actual home page, uh, let's see. I don't know if I see it at, at all. Oh yeah, it's down here, but it's way down toward the bottom. So you know, you want to make sure the phone number. To me, that's the main thing I want somebody to do when they go to my website is to call me if possible. So I want to make sure that we get that up toward the top of the page. And then he put on here that you have uh, duplicate content on some of your sub pages. So you want to make sure you have original content and not duplicating content. I think Google can dock you for that. As well. And last one we're going to look at today, this one was actually built by Covini. So, um, you know, let's see what they say about their own website here or one that they built. Uh, so, you know, again, phone number. Here's the phone number. I'm assuming that probably looks bigger on a phone. Uh, but I, I, maybe it's just my personal preference. What, what do y'all think? You can leave a comment if you want, but I like a big phone number. Um, and there's the email and social media profiles, things like that. So a uh, good menu here. This is my thoughts. Okay, so here's a make appointment thing. I guess that's what you're talking about, where you can easily get on there and schedule for a service. And scroll down and look at it before I read you what they say about it. So. Some good um, actual images and clearly defines what their services are. It's personal pictures, so you can sort of have a, a personal connection with them. More pictures and then testimonials. I really like testimonials. So uh, let's see what they say about the website. So the pros of this one is uh, dense, wordy content. So Google, again, likes content. So let's see here. If you go on About Us, what kind of content do we have here? Okay, so you got, you know, multiple paragraphs. Let's try another page. Services, lawn mowing. So there's a paragraph with a picture. That's not overly amount of content, but the point being that you want, um, more content, more more text involved. It, it, more text is, is just more Google friendly, basically. And he mentions the color contrast here. You got uniformity of color, so it's, it's green. It's just a very you know, nice looking website uh, that's easy to, appealing to your eyes, goes with the lawn care industry, so the color scheme is nice. And then, and then, and I like this, his last point is just a professional image. I feel like this with with logos or business cards, whatever you're doing, I just like kind of clean and professional and not, uh, the word he uses is gimmicky, you know, so not uh, just trying to flash and make a big scene, but more just that clean, professional look. I mean, that's the way I have my truck. It's just my clean logo on, on the side of my truck. Now, my truck, it's rained so much, my truck's not clean, but... Um, you know, everything just wanted to be nice and clean, even my business card. It's just a white business card with my logo and simple information. And, you know, I just wanted that clean look. So same thing with this website. Another thing mentions is the testimonials. I do think testimonials are very powerful and to have those on your website from real people and real testimonials is, is great. Uh, the information is clearly displayed in multiple places on the website, you know, especially like uh, how they how they can contact you so you know there's the phone number here's where you can email them you make an appointment here's another contact button uh, so you know just multiple ways i'm sure when you get down to the bottom let's see let's see you got testimonials yeah you get out here and there's you know their hours you can contact them again find them on a map their phone number again their email address again so there's some, they, you really want to make sure that they don't have to hunt and search for your phone number and a way to contact you. Says he has, is similar, but has buttons and calls to actions two to three times per page. So, 
you, you think, why, why, what am I trying to accomplish with my website? I want them to call me or to fill out the contact form. So you want to make sure that even on other pages, sub pages of the website, that that is uh, easy to find. Talks about the scheduling system here or on the, you know, a way that you can have some sort of form where they can get in touch with you besides the phone number again, because some people are at work, they don't want to pull out their phone and call you at work, but they will fill out a little uh, a way if you have some online way that they can make an appointment or have you contact us for them. And then he mentions the individual pages here for services. So you see here, there's a page for lawn mowing, mulch installs, pruning and edging and other services. So that's a way that you can let Google know that we do all these other things. I say Google, all the search engines, but you know, Google being the most important, but it also gives you more content on the website and helps you rank better in the search engine. Also just better for the person who comes to the website and they say, oh, okay, here's all the services they provide. And so I think it helps in that way as well. And then the negative that they put on this uh, website was the services page need to be filled out with additional content. So let, he said he recommends 500 uh, to 1,000 words, uh, maybe even over 1,000. So yeah, if you look here, that, that's definitely not 500 words or 1,000. So I want to make sure you have more content on these pages to be able to continue to improve on your rankings and um, give Google a better idea of what this page actually is about. Okay, that's enough about websites. Let me know uh, what you thought about this video. I know it's a little different than what we're normally doing, uh, but hopefully it got you some, some good advice on kind of what to look for in a web designer. Uh, again, it, it, to me, it's money well spent. If you, if you want to go that route, if you want to build your own, that's fine. If it's something you want to look forward to in the future, that's fine. But um, there are a lot of benefits to having a website that's nicely designed, that ranks well on Google. And that's not an overnight thing, okay? That's that's the other thing I try to tell people. You know, if you build a website, it's not like necessarily people are going to start calling you tomorrow. I mean, it it takes a while, and if you're not ranking on the search engine, it's not providing that much benefit. So, something to think through. Thanks to the Covini people for helping me out with this and, and giving me the feedback. I thought it would be helpful, and uh, their contact information is in the description of the video if you want to talk to them about a website. Hope it's helpful. Let me hear from you in the comments. If you haven't done so, go ahead and subscribe to the channel. I'm Jason Creel. Thanks for watching. Talk to you later.